externalize any cost that this unwary or uncaring public will allow it to externalize. <laughs> To determine the kind of personality that drives the corporation to behave like an externalizing machine, we can analyze it like a psychiatrist would a patient. We can even formulate a diagnosis on the basis of typical case histories of harm it has inflicted on others, selected from a universe of corporate activity. Well, this is the office of the National Labor Committee here in the garment area of New York City. It's a little bit uh, disheveled. These are all uh, from different campaigns. To make this stuff concrete as possible, we purchase all of the products from the, the factories that we're talking about. This shirt sells for $14.99, and the women who made the shirt got paid three cents. Liz Claiborne jackets made in El Salvador. The jackets are $178, and the workers were paid 74 cents for every jacket they made. Alpine car stereos, 31 cents an hour. It's not just sneakers, it's not just apparel, it's, it's everything. We were in Honduras, and some workers, they knew the kind of work we did, and they approached us, these young workers, and they said, uh, conditions in our factory are horrible. Will you please meet with us? And we said we would, but you can't meet in the developing world. You can't walk up to a factory with your notebook and workers come out and interview them. I mean, there's goons, there's spies, the military police. So you do everything in a clandestine manner. We're about to start the meeting, and in walk three guys, very tough-looking guys. The company had found out about our meeting and sent these spies. Obviously, uh, we didn't have the meeting, but these young girls were really bright. And as they were leaving, Away from the eyesight of the spies, they started to put their hands underneath the table. And I put my palm under there, put my hand under there, and they put into my, my hand their pay stubs. So we'd know who they were, what they were paid, and the labels that they made in the factory so we'd know who they worked for. And I took my hand out after everyone had left, and then the palm of my hand was the face of Kathy Lee Gifford. But the bottom of it is the, the interesting part. A portion of the proceeds from the sale of this garment will be donated to various children's charities. It's very touching. Get your right here. Walmart is telling you if you purchase these pants, and Kathy Lee is telling you, you purchase these pants, you're going to help children. The problem was the people who handed us the label were 13 years of age. Do many people have family work? Just me. You support. How many people do you support? Eight people. Eight people. Yeah. And how do you do with that salary? Is it enough? Let's look at it from a, a different point of view. Let's look at it from the point of view of the, the uh, people in Bangladesh who are starving to death, the people in China who are starving to death, and the only thing that they have to offer to anybody that is worth anything is their low-cost labor. And in effect, what they are saying to the world is they have this big flag that says, come over and hire us. We will work for 10 cents an hour because 10 cents an hour will buy us the rice that we need not to starve. And come and rescue us from our circumstance. And so when Nike comes in, they are regarded by everybody in the community as an enormous godsend. Hey, hey, to hey. be here. The door was wide no, open. No, 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 no. That's my clothes. Hey, Those are my clothes. No, this is not your clothes. Where's your camera? Let's look. Don't touch the woman. Okay, why? Okay. This is a private company. Yes. Without permission, how can you come here? Uh huh. Huh. Well, the door was wide open, and uh... the only way to open your foot door, the employees, not for you. We went through the garbage dump in the Dominican Republic. We always do this kind of stuff. We dig around. One day, we found a big pile of Nike's internal pricing documents. Nike assigns a time frame to each operation. They don't talk about minutes. 
they break the time frame into ten thousandths of a second. You get to the bottom of all 22 operations to give the workers 6.6 .6 minutes to make the shirt. At 70 cents an hour in the Dominican Republic, that 6.6 .6 minutes equals 8 cents. These are Nike's documents. That means the wages come to 3 tenths of 1% of the retail price. This is the reality. It's the science of exploitation.